and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today we're not making soap, we're going to wrap soap. And actually in my shop I wrap my soap in three different ways and I'm not sure why I have three, maybe it's just my indecision, but no, I have reasons for why I have three different styles of wrapping from an expensive, well it's not that expensive, but the most expensive type of wrap that I use to the least expensive. I will show you the three different ways that I wrap bars of soap and the reason why I have three different ways of wrapping. I have the same label type on all the different wrapped styles, but anyway, I will take you through that and I will have a list of the uh, different wrapping options listed down below in the description box. And the description box, sometimes if you're on a mobile device, it will be the word that says show more or a little upside down arrow. That's the description box. Box and there's lots of links and info down there if you haven't found that yet. So anyway, let me get all my supplies out and my cured soap that is ready to wrap. Oh, and by the way, I don't wrap my soap until they're cured. So I do, you know, bevel and stamp my bars within a day or two of making them. And then they sit on the curing wrap for four, rack, not wrap. <laughs> I wrap on the mine. They sit on the curing rack for four to six weeks and then I wrap them when they're all cured and then they go on my stock shelves. So that's how I handle it. Um, so let me grab every all my supplies, everything, and uh, let's wrap some soaps. All right, so first up, the simplest. <laughs> this is such an easy way to wrap soaps. I absolutely love it. I get these little craft boxes from Wholesale Supplies Plus in bulk. They go on sale occasionally and I grab them in bulk and I they don't come with the stamp. I have a little stamp here that I got online with my logo and my little saying on there. And if I can try to find the link for this, it's a pre-inked stamp and you just flip the lid up, center it and stamp down. So I do that on the window side of these boxes and then on the other side, I will put my label. So let me talk about the label for a second. This is what I use for my soap labels. All right, they, this sheet is almost used up print them out and they come out like that. I got these labels from onlinelabels.com and uh, you can see the number of the label right there. And I will try to leave a link down below for these exact ones. I get the craft paper, they have white, they have different colors, different finishes. Um, I think they even come in a waterproof. But anyway, I get the craft ones. So those are the labels. So here's how I do it. I just take a box, it's really simple, and I fold the bottom. There we go. Grab a bar of soap. Today I'm doing my triple butter bars in these boxes, and I'll tell you about how I choose what wrappings go on which soap bar. So the triple butter bars have always have like a real pretty swirl or something, and I want a little bit of that to show in the window, and it fits in there really nice. Um, and then I shrink wrap my more showy bars that have embeds or are just, you know, more bright and fluffy looking, <laughs> if you will. Uh, that's my shrink wrap. And then I have craft paper for my more earthy bars, like my goat milk, oats, and honey, and my unscented bars. And we'll get to those, but for now. So I've got the stamp side with the window and then the plain side, make sure it's right side up and grab my label here and it's got says that it's a bar of soap some of the features in it what it is all the good stuff that needs to be on a soap label and so we've got that on there and who it is this is ellen ruth soap it's a triple butter bar some of the features in there and what it is this is handcrafted small batch artisan soap made in tennessee and how much it weighs so there's the label now you can also put an ingredient label on here, or if you do a cigar band or one of the wrapping bands, um, this box, because of the space here, you'd wanna make sure that your band fit under there, or you can wrap it around like that and do more information like any pertinent allergy information, ingredients, all those things are wonderful to add on there. When I add ingredient labels on my soap boxes, I have a little separate label that I just put down here. So there's the main label though, and here's the craft boxes. So that's super easy. I'm talking a lot, but I can wrap up soaps very quickly in these boxes. So let me get a couple more wrapped and we'll move on to the next wrapping option. All right, 
here's the next option, and this is my Creamy Goat Milk Unscented Soap, which is just so gentle, and it's wonderful. So kind of because it has that sort of earthy vibe, it's unscented, very natural, you know, thing going on. <laughs> um, I like to do them in these craft papers. So it's a bakery tissue. I get these from Websterant. I have found them on Amazon. Um, if I'm ordering from Websterant and paying shipping, I will get them there because they're a little better price, but they do charge shipping. So sometimes Amazon is a better option. Here is the size I'm using. So they are, one side is a wax coated. They're perfect for soap. I just think these make beautiful wrapping. So I use scotch tape. Uh, if you don't like to use tape because you're 100% plastic free, you could use a glue stick or um, glue dots or something, but I do use scotch tape. So place my bar on here and we're gonna wrap it up and tape it all closed and then put the label on the non-tapey side. So this is a little more labor intensive than the box, obviously. It's also much more inexpensive. Of all my options, this is the least expensive option for wrapping your soap because once you buy these tissues, there's, you know, like a thousand in there. So they're just less than pennies per tissue. Um, so very budget friendly. Uh, really the only cost in this is the tape and the label. So got that. Actually, I'm going to put my label here. So creamy unscented goat milk soap. I'm gonna put it on the tape side to cover up the scotch tape and just give it that sort of, I don't know, to me this just has a real natural vibe and you can kind of see, you can smell through these. If you have a fragranced soap, you can scent through these wrappings because you know, they're paper and the soap can continue to breathe in here. I think it's just a wonderful budget-friendly option but it is the most labor intensive also because you have to take time to, you know, the fiddly business of wrapping. So let me get a couple of these bars wrapped for you before we move on to the last more flashy way to wrap your bars. least I do shrink wrapping on my more showy bars like this one blue ocean waves isn't that beautiful and you know it's got an embed in there and on top and it's just visually a knockout so I like to have it in the clear wrapping so you can see you know all those big bold beautiful colors so and they smell fantastic too um, when it comes to shrink wrapping there are so many different options you can get a shrink wrap wrap system they do have um eco shrink wrap that's breathable and biodegradable um but that's a very expensive unit this is an eight inch uh heat press from amazon and i will leave a link down below um, it's just super basic and i have it comes with a couple extra little uh, teflon pads here and i have had to replace it once and they you can get replacement parts so it's pretty basic um, electronics here. It has a number sensor here. Uh, this is several years old. So start out at a low heat and if it doesn't seal, just turn it up till you get to the point where it seals. You don't want to start on the max. So as this has aged, I've had to increase my heat setting. I think I have it now on, let me see if I can see the little dial on here. Yeah, I have it up all the way now, <laughs> but I used to be able to do it here. So as this, you know, this is a pretty good workhorse. I've used it again. I've had this, gosh, for probably five years. Um, so it's pretty hot. But when you get a new one, you know, don't start at the hottest. You know, see if you can keep it lower. Anyway, that's my two cents on heat presses. And then any heat gun will do. I got this pink one, I think, at Hobby Lobby, again, like years and years ago. Um, it's super inexpensive. It was just the cheapest one I could find and I grabbed it and it came in this pretty pink color, but any heat gun will do. A low temperature heat gun is best because the shrink wraps do shrink very quickly. And if you have a high heat gun, 
um, it can, you know, burn a hole in your shrink wrap super fast. So anyway, there's my heat gun. And if I can find one similar to that, I will leave a link in the description box below also. And here's the shrink wraps that I'm currently using. Uh, I got these ones on Amazon. I have bought them on Wholesale Supplies Plus when they have a sale. It's usually a great sale and I just buy them in bulk. And the reason I got this size, obviously this is too big for my soap. This is a six by six inch size. I got this because it was a great price and this will fit my big bath bombs. So I don't have to buy multiple different sizes for multiple different things. This will fit odd shaped soaps. And um, so I will show you how I cut off the excess on these. It's a little bit of waste, but I only had to buy one size to cover everything. So to me, it's worth it. Let me show you. So normally you could do a, a soap bar like this in a four by six bag would fit it. But this is my bath bomb, they're big bombs. And because they're so thick and everything, it wouldn't fit in that size. So that's why I got the bigger size. So the way I normally do it is I get all my soaps, bag them up, seal them and set them off to the side and do all the heat sealing in one step and then the heat gun in the next. But today I'll do the whole thing one step after another, just so you can see how it's done. Aren't those dolphins adorable? Ah, I'm so crazy about these bars. So I like to get it all the way up to the top here. And I got the excess. This is how you do if your bags are too big. If you get the proper size bag for your bar, you don't have to do this step, but I just trim it down. Now it fits. And I go ahead and kind of press out the excess air and I gently pull and as soon as it starts to melt it pulls away I don't I'm not yanking it out I'm just putting a little pressure on it and that way I know that it, the heat has sealed it and it just breaks away real easy so there it is and uh, let me do another one here so I'll have two to shrink wrap for you isn't that cute plus uh, sometimes when I do wavy tops or scoop tops they're a little tall for the boxes and those would get pressed in the uh the box because it makes them tall so the bag fits them really well if they get an odd size and just gently i'm pulling till i feel it let go There we go. And then I have seen people do heat sealing where they'll have a stack of them and do it. I've, I've tried doing that and my stack tips over. I just heat seal one at a time. That's just how I roll. And I have this nice stainless steel table that's you want a flat surface um, to work on. It has to be heat proof. Uh, you don't want to have a vinyl tablecloth or anything because you could melt it because these do even this is a low temperature crafting heat gun but it gets pretty hot on the tip so it's got the little stand so it doesn't you know touch and melt anything so just be cautious with it so it's going to get loud here it's warming up and there we go and i hold it down and i just go around all four sides and if it bubbles up like that it's okay it'll come out so I heat up any corners and rub them on my table so there's no sharp points. I'm going to turn that off so I can talk. So after you've shrink wrapped it, if it has any of those like little points that you don't mush down, they can get really sharp. So that's why I like to heat it and, and press it on the table so it's nice and smooth. There's nothing that's going to point you and, and scratch you. So there it's all done. And so you pick the side that you want to be the front of your soap bar and you get your label here. And put it on. And that way they can see the beautiful swirls even when it's wrapped.
right, here's a little bonus. This is how I shrink wrap any odd shaped soaps like uh, my hearts or flowers or things that are not a standard square size. I use these, are two inch labels from onlinelabels.com and this is their Maestro label designer. And a round label fits most of my little odd size bars. This is uh, what I do when I have leftover soap batter. I keep soap molds off to the side and pour these and they make beautiful little three ounce bars. So I'll show you how I do that with the round labels. About the samples I figured I'd show you how I wrap, wrap my little sample bars so these are just you know perfect for a little example of a different kind of soap I, I try to grab a sample that isn't in the order when people place an order but even if they order like one of everything I always throw a sample in there so this is what they look like all wrapped these are again just my regular soap labels and I just dot out the ounces on there because these obviously are not five ounces and it's just a sample. So when I print my labels, I print enough extra to go ahead and make samples. So these little bags I get in bulk from Wholesale Supplies Plus. It's just a little glassine bag. You can find them on Amazon. I'm sure you can find them in several different places. It's a about a four by two inch size for my little samples here. So I just grab one and throw it in here. These samples are usually about an ounce around that. It's just perfect. Fold over the top, put my label on to seal it up, and there it is. And then I keep this basket full of samples, and it sits right up above where I print out people's orders, so I go and grab their um, things that they ordered, and then I rifle through here and grab a sample that hopefully that they didn't order so they can try something new. And so that's the sample wrap. Okay, so at the time of filming the wrapping, I did not have my ingredient labels printed, but I wanted to show them to you and how I put them on my box soap. So here's what they look like. These are just plain little, they're a little bit smaller than an address label. I'll leave the link down below. These are from onlinelabels.com and uh, they're just small and they fit on the underside. They're about the width of a bar of soap. So that's why I chose these labels. So I will show you how I put them on my box. Here is my triple butter. This is a triple butter label and it's got all the ingredients on there. And again, Dixon, Tennessee, where the soap was made. And I literally just put it on the bottom of the box. Boom. That's it. So I wish that I was a little more pulled together with my label designing. I've seen some really awesome where they take a long, like um, the labels that I use on my uh, round you know body butter jars those are long enough where they will design the label have it wrap the box have the ingredients have it wrap up the back with more information i love that i'm just not that good at label design which is why i haven't done a video on it yet because i'm super challenged and there are other better ones on youtube so unless i feel like i can give you good and useful information i don't want to tackle that i've been asked before show us how to design labels I'm terrible at that. So I have super basic labels. But anyway, there's the ingredient label. That's how I do it. All right, so here they are. This is the three different ways that I wrap my soap bars. I, well, four different ways if you count these little oddballs, but they kind of go in this category. Um, and from least expensive to most expensive, but easiest to most difficult. <laughs> so it all depends on your time and the money you want to invest in wrapping your soap bars. But I think each of these is a really great way to wrap your soaps. I, I love them all. I can't choose just one. To me, they're all fantastic. So I think I'm gonna keep all three ways of doing it. Uh, Cause it just sort of represents, I like it. So, and uh, to me, the label sort of unifies them all, even though they're all different, they are similar. So. There it is. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate you taking the time and have a wonderful day. Bye.